Hey everyone, this is Tiffany. Alan will be here soon as well. Hey, I'm right here. Oh, hey. Here. You say my name and I appear, you know, like Beetlejuice like that. <laughs> is everyone excited? You know what today is? No, oh, the final. It's the last class. Come on now. Last class. And also, I'm happy that you're excited about finals. Maybe we should just release more challenges. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The more they like the final, the more challenges they get, right? Exactly. <laughs> uh, all right. Cool. Well, thanks, everyone. Um, sorry, I'm. Uh... I was setting up some software that Tiffany and I were talking about and my download that I was originally having was insanely slow. So I just want to verify that it pops up. Yep. Oh, it also, um, there we go. Uh, cool. Do you sudo it? Sometimes you need to sudo in order to get a permission to read traffic. Uh, no, I'm going to read from a file. So I think it should okay. be fine, but let's okay. see. Uh, yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah. Okay. So how do I do this without you guys seeing everything I'm doing? Okay. Let's see. Um, Oh, let me, sorry, I have to switch things because if I'm going to, I assume everyone wants to be able to see my screen or my uh, text that I type. Cool. So I will launch it. And before then we will um, actually, first what I'll do is I'll actually go over it. So you all actually pay attention to me first uh, and then I will launch it. And then we can maybe play with the final CTF system together. How does that sound? Sounds good. Cool. So, uh, yay, thank you. Cool. I thought that would be fun to do. All right. So, slightly different setup um, for the final CTF and the midterm CTF. Uh, part of that has to do with some of the challenges just don't really lend themselves to a um, to the midterm CTF environment. So uh, we set it up slightly different, but it's you know you still have uh, access to it. So uh, first things first, you should have received an email with your credentials. So what we did is we went on the CTF uh, website, we took all your usernames and emails, and we created uh, passwords for you on the system. We also took the SSH keys that you had there. So if you had an SSH key loaded there, you should be able to access it without anything. So like for instance, um, my account is uh, adamd at finalctf. So the the URL is, or the um, server's DNS name is finalctf.cse365.io. So you SSH in there with your username and at that. And when you do that, you can get on the server. So. I actually already had a connection set up, but because I have my SSH key here, uh, I already populated it here. So if you have an SSH key loaded, if you had an SSH key loaded to the CTF site, it should just work. Otherwise, it will ask you for your password. You type in the password that we gave you in the email, and you'll get access to this system. Um, okay. And of course, it drops you like normal in Home Adam D. And this is a shared server. So uh, if I look at uh, Home. Uh, you can probably see a bunch of names here, right? These are all of your accounts that came from the uh, straight from from the CTF site. Uh, if you haven't received the email in probably like 20 minutes or so, let me know uh, because some of you put in the wrong email address uh, when you signed up for the CTF site. So you'll probably need to ask us and we can, as long as you verify your identity, we can uh, hook you up. Check whatever email you signed up for on the CTF site. And cool. OK, so then from there. Uh, OK, so now that we're on this system, no, this is not up. You cannot access this. Like I said, I want you to pay attention to me right now. So I'm the only one who can access the system right now. Uh, I can look, and I'm the, only I'm the only person on here. So what we can do, OK. so. What's the goal here? Uh, the goal is, and just like on the website, we have a scoreboard. So there's, a, if you run a program called score, it will show you uh, there are uh, 11 challenges here. So advanced overflow, basic overflow, find that pass groups, just execute me, read secret, rot me, search, secure this house, stolen data and tidy up. So there's 11 challenges. 
Uh, each challenge uh, will be worth 12 points out of 100, and you can get up to uh, 120 points extra credit. Um, the question now is how do you start these challenges? So you don't need to click anything. Every, all the challenges are located in slash var slash challenge. So if you uh, list that directory in var challenge, you'll see all the different challenges. So we have advanced overflow, basic overflow, find that pass, right? All of the challenges here. So I'll give you a hint. And by the end of this class, each of you should have done this one challenge. Uh, first challenge is just execute me. Um, so just execute me. So in each of these uh, directories, if we look in here, uh, you'll notice at least in this, uh, you know, this styling, these are yellow. Uh, why are these things in yellow here in my output? It's not because it's executable. This is executable, it's green, right? We can see these are executable. What's different about the permissions between those two? Yeah, what does the S in the permissions mean? Ooh, we talked about this when we talked about permissions way back. It's not sticky. Or I think it's, is it? No, it's not, definitely not sticky and it's not secure. It's not sticky. Yeah. Set UID, except it's not on the user ID. So if there's an S here in the RWX on the first thing, it would be a set user ID, which would mean that this stolen data runs as the user root. The S is on the group. So this means set group ID, exactly. So this means when you run this stolen data or this tidy up program, it's running as this group stolen dash data. And in fact, that's how we know what um, when you solved things and what group you're in. So um, so the goal is basically to get to all these groups and that's how we know you've solved things. So let's look at our old pal, just execute me. So var challenge, just execute me. Boom. Already broke it. Look at that. We are great. Uh, and if I run score, I'm the first one on the scoreboard. Hopefully you all can catch up to me. Um, uh, and we can see that it's, uh, I've completed just execute me. Uh, we also have a helper script here. Um, it is, uh, yeah, okay. Can't remember, is it a binary? Yeah, it's a binary. Okay, that's not very helpful, but uh, anyways, so, uh, we have this leap binary. So if you run this and you've broken one of the levels, so if you run um, just execute me or something, uh, or if you if you can trick, the, the basic idea is if you can trick any command to execute group, so any of these set group ID commands, so anything like we saw in um, var challenge, like uh, rop me, let's say, if you can get this binary and trick it to execute this leak command, it will automatically add you to the group because once you've broken this, you're now executing as this rop me user, but then you actually have to add yourself to the group rop me. And so we actually uh, do that with this leak. And actually if I run, um, I think I can show, I don't know, I want a var challenge. Um, just execute me. So let's look at what actually happened with just execute me. So if I run it with S trace, what it is doing is go up, 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 lots of output. That's okay. So it's doing stuff. It's running, just execute me, just execute me goes, and it is going to call exec VE user local bin leap. So the only thing that that uh, this just execute me does is execute the program user local bin leaked. Um, and, 
and actually it it will write out and say hmm doesn't seem like you've broken a level yet try to break one of the levels in bar challenge so how come when i ran this like this it works but when i want to run s trace it tells me that it doesn't look like I've broken a level yet. But when I run it here, it's telling me, congratulations, you broke that level. So I'm getting different, elf, different uh, output. Yeah, exactly. So it's debugging, right? The fact that I'm debugging this binary and this binary is a um, set group ID program. So if you debug a binary, it drops privileges. So same thing if I tried to do GDB var challenge, just execute me, uh, just execute me. If I do this and do run, I'll get the exact same output. It says, hmm, doesn't seem like you've broken a level yet. Try to break one of the levels in var challenge, then call this command. So it's the same thing, right? This is why you're finding out with assignment five, if you run something in the debugger and you try to exploit it by changing RIP or whatever, it's not gonna give you the flag because you, it's, you're not operating at those permissions. Cool. So any questions on the uh, format here? Is there a file that um, we can create like files in like for assignment five, how we created like the Python scripts? Yeah, absolutely. So your home directory, you can put whatever you want in there. So you can feel free. Obviously don't go crazy. It's a shared system. So I think there's some limits on sizes of files, but, uh, but yeah, feel free to, you know, upload scripts here, download stuff from here, SCP, all that stuff that, that how you got files in and out of the other system work just the same on here. And they're not the same systems, right? So your files don't automatically transfer over or anything, but you have full control over here. Any other questions? Um, will other challenges give us like a password or something or do they just kind of yeah, like mark you getting to a certain point? Let's check uh, another challenge. So for instance, um, Trying to think of a search no find that pass is a good one um, so we can look at the directory we can see two things we can see there's four files in here there's a note there's a program called find that pass which is set uid group id we have a find that pass.py and then we have this program called network trace so which of these do we have to execute to actually uh, try the challenge Yeah, find that pass, not the Python file, the one that set UID. And if you are confused, that's why there is a file called note that says the binary find that pass is just a wrapper to call find that pass.py. There's no intended vulnerability in the find that pass uh, binary. So let's do what it says. Let's execute it, find that pass. It says, hey, you hacker over there, I found a traffic dump that I know contains a password, but I don't know where it is. This traffic capture is in the file var challenge find that pass network trace. You can use the tools TCP dump and Wireshark to view this file. You can even take the file to your local machine for offline analysis using from your local machine SCP. So it's actually giving you the SCP command to use. Uh, so SCP is secure copy. So we can use this command to copy that file to our local machine. And now it's saying, uh, we believe that the admin logged onto a web server, so find their password, which is base64 encoded. Luckily, we have a hash of the password. Prove that you can identify the password by giving us the admin's password. So let's say it's admin. Uh, doesn't match too bad. So the goal here is to analyze this network trace and figure out what the password is. And actually, what I want to do before I open it up to everything is actually demonstrate this, because we didn't get a, um, a chance to uh, go over showing you Wireshark. So I can uh, go to temp, SCP. Uh, yes, I will post this. Uh, what is it? Finalctf.cse365.io. Oh, obviously I need to change username to Adam D. And so then it copies uh, network trace locally. So uh, that file is there. And now let me uh, switch over to Wireshark.
Cool. Can you all see this uh, Wireshark screen? Yes, thank you. OK, so what we're going to do is open up that file I just put. So that, and if we run, um, shoot, I should have showed it. But if we run file on it, it would tell us it's a PCAP file. And so we can open up uh, in Adam, I think it was temp. Yep, Adam temp uh, network trace. Cool. So this is a uh, Wireshark. So this is, a, you know, we're not going to go super in depth in it here, but if you remember back to networking, this is capturing every packet that was sent. So there's uh, some, oh, 11,000 packets. Yeah, 11,000 packets. So based on the information that was in the challenge, your goal is to recover uh, this password. Uh, and so you know, Wireshark is really cool. You can look at, so it takes like TCP packets. Um, so you can see it parses it out here. So all of the parts of the packet that we talked about in our examples. So we know the relative time that this was sent, the source IP, destination IP, the protocol is TCP, the length of the packet, um, the ports here. So it's saying it's from 5357, uh, sorry, 53537 to port 80 with a SYN packet, so it's a SYN packet to start something. Uh, sequence numbers, acknowledgement numbers, length, all that stuff. And the cool thing is you can dig in here and see all of the uh, ethernet headers. You can see all of the IP headers. Everything is parsed from this packet. The TCP information, uh, you can do cool things in Wireshark, like right click and say, um, you can say follow the TCP stream. So it then shows you a, a new view and it shows you the client and server sending data to each other that's parsed from that entire TCP stream. How does it know uh, that these are all part of the same TCP stream? Oh no, networking knowledge. We haven't thought about paging it in and out of our brains. Not the IP headers from, yeah, so two things, right? So same source IP, same destination IP, same source port, same destination port. And then it follows the SYN, SYNAC, ACK, and follows the sequence numbers to make sure that everything in there and it knows the order and everything. So it reassembles from this the uh, flow and the contents here. Um, and cool. And you could do things like all kinds of filters here. You can say what... Uh, uh, I think it's tcp.port equals 80. And this would show you all the packets in here that are either from or to port 80. Uh, you could do all kinds of cool filters. So anyways, the goal of part of this assignment, as you know, the networking stuff came after the midterm. So this allows you to uh, dig into some cool networking stuff. Any questions on Wireshark? And we're going to ask uh, maybe some folks. And so if you have good resources, feel free to share with the class of like videos that are really good that describe how to use Wireshark or and stuff like that. Any questions on Wireshark right now? No, all I can think of right now is you guys in the uh, let me in meme. I feel like that's where you are right now if you just want to get access to this server. So uh, how about I do that? All right, let me, I have to go into AWS and open it up. I restricted it so that only my IP address has access. Not even Tiffany has access to this server yet. So um, I guess hopefully I didn't mess everything up completely. Security groups, this one. All right, edit inbound rules. And again, only port 22 is open. So you, there's no website there. You have to SSH into this machine. All right, it should be up. So you should be able to SSH to the machine. Can somebody uh, do that with their credentials and verify that it works? Yes, you'll need, it's, uh, 
Cool. So I can see, oh, nice. A good amount of people on here. Cool. So uh, goal right now is, and so basically for the rest of the class, I mean, Tiffany and I will be here to answer any questions or anything. Let me, uh, I'm going to break up this recording. So I'm going to split it into two of just this and then the, the questions and all that stuff. So let me Oh, Tiffany, it's recording to your computer. Yes, it's recording. Oh, I need to stop recording. Sorry. Yeah, can you can you stop recording, please? Yes.